Hey good folks, Ramel Avram here for Touch Plus and welcome back to the second part of this Reflow Lava Lamp tutorial. In the previous part, we have set up the simulation in Reflow and in this part, we'll build a mesh using those particles, import it into Maya, create a shader for it, illuminate the scene and render. We would need to create two separate meshes one for the container and one for the fill object. Let's go over to the mesh menu and we'll choose particle mesh render kit. And right now nothing is assigned to this mesh. So we'll right click on it and mark insert emitters. We'll start with the container and hit OK. Let's first test it out and see how it looks. For the time being, we can hide these. I'll mark them both and hit Ctrl H. Right click on the particle mesh and mark build. Now, these are the default settings. By the way, I'm hitting 9 to get the shaded view. And as you can see, the default settings up close are nothing too impressive. So, let's see how we can get a better result. We'll first change the type from spheres to metaballs. Now, metaballs do tend to get a bit more blobbier, but we can work around that. We'll change the polygon size to 0 0.03. Let's move one frame forward and run another test. Right click, build, and it's already better. But we can still see it's not too smooth, right? We'll move down to the filter section and we'll change filter no to yes. We'll set the relaxation to 0.8 and the tension to 0.4. One step is really not enough. I'll set the steps to 250. So we'll get a very, very smooth mesh. Let's move over one frame and see how it like looks. Right click, build. And as you can see, this is a lot smoother. It's not extremely smooth if we get up close, but from a relatively reasonable distance, it is smooth enough. So let's repeat the process and let's create another particle mesh render kit from the mesh menu. We'll set the same settings. So type is metaballs, polygon size is 0.3, filter yes, and relaxation 0.8, Tension 0.4 and 250 steps. We'll assign the fill object to it. So right click on the particle mesh, insert emitters, fill object, OK, and let's build to see how it looks. Very nice. Very, very nice. I am very happy with the way this looks. At this point, we can safely mesh the entire simulation sequence. I would just like to point out one thing. At some points in single frames during the simulation, you might find that one or two of these meshes have missing frames. You will find that in Maya. And once you do find that out, you would need to go back to Realflow, pick those frames, and just for those single frames, set the tension to zero and just build that single frame. Let's mesh the entire simulation sequence by hitting this build meshes icon. Here we are back in Maya and it's time to import our mesh from Reflow into Maya. To save me some time, I'm going to use the mesh that I used in the preview. In the Reflow tab, the last button is import mesh bin and in the meshes folder you would find the rendered mesh. We have the particle mesh container and particle mesh fill object. I'll choose the first one, hit load and I'll hit create. Now if you haven't installed the Realflow Maya tools, you can always go to file import and from the same folder now we need not the container but the fill object sequence and there it is just choose one of those and hit import 
the default settings works for us, so we'll hit create. Now, the first one is the container. Let's rename this one to container, just so we can tell the difference, even though it doesn't really matter at this point. Now, the rendered real flow mesh is 5000 frames long. It's way too much, and if you're not planning on creating time remap sequence as I created in the preview, there is really no reason to create so many frames. But for now, we'll use it as is. We we'll do need to change some of the settings here. So let's go over to this icon here, choose settings, set the time to 100 frames per second. Then we'll hit save. We'll set the length of the timeline to 5000. Let's move over to the side view for a second and to shade the view. As you can see, the mesh is not centered where we need it, so we'll move it to the center. Let's open up the hypershade. We'll go to Window, Render and Editors, Hypershade. We are looking for an SSS shader, i.e. Subsurface Scatter shader. Usually these are used in a skin, We'll use the Misfest skin Maya. It's currently red because at the moment I'm using uh, Maya software and not Maya Mental Ray, so let's take care of that. We'll go to Render, Render using Mental Ray. Okay, let's move back to our Hypershade and there's our Misfest skin. Double click on it and let's see. First, we'll rename it to Wax1. Let's toggle down the subsurface scattering layer. And here we've got the three layers of skin. And I would like to change the epidermal scatter color to a light blue, something of this sort. We'll set the subdermal scatter color to green, something of this sort. And the back scatter color to yellow. The final color is the combination of these three, and by changing the scatter weight, we can change the amount each color appears. We'll change the epidermal scatter weight to 0.3. The scatter radius will change to 0.05. We'll set the subdermal scatter weight to 0.6, and we'll set the back scatter weight all the way up to 5. We'll set the backscatter depth to 50. Other than that, we've got the specularity section. Let's toggle that down. The only thing I would like to change here is the amount of reflection we have here, which is the reflect weight. At the moment, we have no reflection whatsoever. And I don't want it to be too reflective, but I do want some reflection going on here. So I'll change it to 0.1. Okay, and the very last thing, I would like to change the diffuse to be not as high, but somewhere in the middle, something like this. Now, if we'll scroll down here, we've got the light map. We have uh, an automatic light map uh, applied here, and we don't really need to touch that. However, we've got the samples. Now, from my experience, the lower the samples value is, the more noise you would get on the shader. And frankly, to get a good render, you would need to multiply this a couple of times. So again, I've experimented with this quite a bit, and I found that multiplying this value 64 times, which gives us 4096 samples, gives the best result for me. Let's mark both meshes and apply the material we have just created. Choose Assign Existing Material, Wax 1. It's painted red since that's the way these materials appear in the viewport. In order to view them as they should appear, we need to render them. But before we do that, let's set up the lights. For this purpose, I'm also going to use the lights I've already created. Let's uh, bring those back to the scene. Now, I've got two lights which would light up just the wax, 
and two more lights which would light up the entire scene. Other than these four lights, I would also like to apply an image-based light. And for that, actually, let's bring the status line back. I'll just right-click on these dots here and mark the status line. And let's see, in the indirect lighting tab, I've got the image-based lighting and I'll hit create. In the folder, I'll insert an HDR image I've got here. Back to our lights. The bottom light we've got here will simulate the actual lamp we've got in a lava lamp that heats up the wax and causing it to melt and float around. But other than that, it really illuminates the bottom part of the wax here. So that's the reason we got this array here of lights. This bottom light is high in intensity. Its intensity is 10. And the backlight here, its intensity is 0.3. Other than that, we've got the scene lights. This one is set to 1 and the other one is set to 0.5. Now, let's talk about light linking. We'll go to Window, Relationship Editors, Light Linking, Light Centric. Now, at the moment, all the lights here apply to everything in the scene. And that's not what we are really after. What we are after is that the wax lights would apply only to the container and the fill object. That's it, nothing more. And again, container and fill object, and that's it. And the area light would apply to everything, and same goes for the image based light. So we can uh, close this one and we can move this one aside. I really should apply some material here to the base. I'll go to, well, it's off the recording area, but uh, I'll go to assign favorite materials and I'll choose a blend. And for the lamp, I'll again right click, go to assign new material, Maya Material X passes. And let's see, from the presets, I'll choose Glass Thin and I'll hit replace. And that should be it. Let's see what's my render settings here. I'm using Final Gathering 250 accuracy. In the quality tab, I've set the max samples level to 2. I'll set the filter to Mitchell. Make sure the render options that the default light are set to off. And let's see what else. Oh, yeah, I don't really want to see the uh, image based light in the render, so I'll hit Ctrl A to access its attributes and let's see render stats primary visibility will turn that off we do want it visible in reflections and refractions and in the final getter we just don't want to see it in the primary visibility let's view the camera settings resolution gate i think we are all set and done let's give it a test render and see how it looks well as you can see something has went wrong here and I think I know what. Let's close this uh, render view and let's bring back our relationship editor. At the moment, area light is applied to everything. And I would like the area light to apply to everything but the container and the fill object. Same goes for both area lights. And now let's give it another test render. Actually, let's uh, save this one and give it another test render. That looks a bit better, although we do have dark spot here. So let's see. I'll set the wax light one, which is the bottom one, this one here. I'll actually triple it. I'll set it to 30. And now let's render it again. And there you go. We have a very nice wax material going on here. And at the bottom here, you can even see where it really is brighter and turning a bit yellow. One more thing I wanted to mention is that we are not obligated to use just one material here. Let's bring back the hypershade. We can duplicate wax 1. We'll change the colors here for the wax 2. Make this one orange and red and uh, purple. We'll assign this material to the container, so right click, 
assign existing materials wax 2. We don't need to uh, create a new light map since we already have one. We'll just set it to use selected. Let's uh, save this image and render it again. So, okay, the purple here might be a bit too strong. Let's uh, select something a bit lighter, something of this sort, and we'll change the subdermal scatter color to something lighter. We're still in the red area. Let's change the epidermal to a lighter yellow. Let's open up the previous render, save it, and render it again. This brings to a conclusion this tutorial on the RealFlow Lava Lamp Simulation. I hope you enjoyed this tutorial, folks. Once again, my name is Ramel Avraham, and I'll see you next time.